Hello everybody, this is Roving Shadow, and I am back with more Quest for Glory 4, Shadows of Darkness. Um, la last left off in the inn, um, we have some people to talk to and everything, and I checked the music. This is, uh, if I can remember it now, um, Anitra's Dance by Edvard Grieg. A Norwegian composer, I believe. Um, so, yes, that, that is what this music is. It comes from an actual thing. It wasn't made specifically for the game, but it is amazing. Um, so, let's um, get started. There is a few things left to do before we actually talk to people, in that I never actually... I looked at a bunch of things, but I never... You better not do that. Your hand might get stepped on by an elephant. And that would be bad. Let's touch Nothing the fire. Nothing like warming your hands by a cozy fire. Ah, yes. It doesn't budge. It doesn't budge. Fortunately, they're out of your reach. Oh. <laughs> tusk, tusk. <laughs> You mustn't be so boring, you know. <laughs> so funny, so funny. Um. Okay, let's come back down. Oh, wait, I never actually looked at the pillar. The ornamental pillars must have been carved by an expert craftsman. They must have. The pillar is solidly set in the floor and the ceiling. Ah, I can't take the pillar. Okay, so let's finally. Introduce they ourselves. stare at you in astonishment. Um, fine. You say you are a hero. Well, we will judge you here by your actions rather than your words. Very well. Judge us by our actions. We will be very heroic. Magic is a very dangerous thing. Is we it? do not trust those who use or are used by magic. But it's not my fault. Make certain you do not give us any more cause for alarm. Um, okay, everyone here apparently hates us, and is concerned about us, and does not like us. Ah, uh, tell us about the end. The Hotel Mordavia has been in my family for generations. It is the only place to be when darkness falls at night. Everything else is closed, and even we lock the doors. You must knock if you wish to come in. Oh, okay, lovely. My name is Yuri Markarov. My wife's name is Bella. We are the owners of this inn. Okay, nice to meet you, Yuri. If you climb the stairs, your room is the first door on the right. The doors of the inn close before nightfall. So make sure you are always back before sunset. Okay, I will make sure of it. Make certain you are back in town before dusk. Yes. The gates of the town will close solidly to keep out any dangers. Okay. I have to be back by night. I understand that. The Burgomeister is the mayor of the town. You will be wise to listen to what he says and stay out. Of trouble. Well, if I listened to what he said, I'd already be gone, so that's not happening. There is not much for sale at the shop next door, but you may find something you need there. The monastery is to the north of here. It has been abandoned for many, many years, but it has a bad reputation. Why? No one in town will go near it, and if you have any sense... Neither will you. I'm sure it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to go visit it. There are many ill things that roam this valley by night. Make certain that you <coughs> never have to meet them. Never venture into the forest by night. There is something up with nighttime here. They, they, I keep getting all these warnings about it. Okay, now uh, I forgot to check who these all um are based on, but let's let's say hello to them. These are probably the funniest people in the entire game. 
Well, let's, let's first ask them their names. In this, you will definitely want to pay attention to what is actually said than what is um, written. It's not so much in this first meeting, but definitely later, later on when we talk to them again. Definitely just listen to them. They are hilarious. I am Hans. Pleasure's all yours. I'm a farmer of pumpkins and corn and a person of great importance here in lovely Mordavia. Great importance. Listen, I'm you. telling you, Igor's death I, I, must be avenged. What is this? Um, Pleased to meet you. I'm Ivan, an elephant herder. Unfortunately, there are no more elephants in Mordavia, so business has kind of fallen off a tad. Just a tad. And that one where they were talking about Igor's death must be avenged. That is actually a slight um, bug in that that should not be said until like near the end of the game or at least halfway through the game. Um, I don't know why it's done here. It, well, it's not supposed to be, but um, you can ignore that for now. Okay, so now that we've met these three lovely fellows, let's ask them about Mordavia. Guys, is it just me or is Mordavia a wonderful place? That it is. Oh, are you kidding? It's the greatest. There's many places to go, things to see. Are you kidding? Right. Let's not forget that scenic cemetery to the east of town. Yes, scenic cemetery. Everyone here is nothing but grins. Real friendly. Yeah, except we don't know you. We don't like strangers. Uh, or anyone yeah. else that's weird and doesn't belong. In other words, a stranger. Yes, I know. You really, really do not like strangers in Mordavia. Ah, uh, what type of rumors could you tell rumors. us? Rumors? You talking to me? Yes. What I rumors? Any? Oh, there are no rumors here. Unless you count the rumor that the castle is owned by... Uh, Horse Patootie. Uh, um, there are no rumors in Mordavia to um, speak castle of. Castle owned by who? Wait, 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 wait. Who's... Who, what? You're gonna say something. Uh, tell us about the town. The town of Mordavia is a quiet place. Filled with friendly. Joyful, stinky people! Stinky people. Well, I'm not so sure about the friendly part. We tend to be very suspicious of strangers like you. Yeah, well, anyway, the town is filled with joyful and stinky people. Yeah, happy, joyful, and stinky people. Well, I wouldn't call us particularly joyful. As a matter of fact, most of us are pretty glum. <laughs> Oh, very well, all right, then Mordavia is filled with people, you know, stinky ones. Yeah, many stinky people. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it many. There actually aren't very many of us around here. Oh, forget it. Well, at least he stinks. That he does. Uh, yes, we will be talking to them a couple times, and it, it just gets better. Pretty much every time we talk to them, it, it gets quite a bit better. Um, I think this is everything right here. Let's um, let's head up to our room. Take a look at it. You unlock the door to your room and go in. Um, and you know what? It is actually quite lovely. Like, I I I really like it. It's a braided circular rug, apparently mass-produced. Let's look at the window. The window opens out onto the back of the inn. A narrow ledge runs under it on the outside. Huh. The lamp dimly illuminates your bedroom. Lamp oil is included in the rent. Ah, very good. The candle provides a supplementary light source to economize on lamp oil. Garlic braids festoon the room adding that certain special ambiance of Gilroy in the spring to the room. Ah, garlic. And here we can actually... You take a clove of garlic in case you meet an Italian chef somewhere. Yes, now we have garlic. And let's eat some. You bite off a bit of one of the garlic cloves. Watch out, werewolves. Not to mention dates. <laughs> uh, let's look at the garlic. Said to be 
potent protection against werewolves and other shape-changing creatures. It's also handy for making stews, sauces, and many other spicy dishes. Yes. Um, now, I never actually used candy on us. You pop one of the candies into your mouth, noticeably raising your triglyceride level. <laughs> Okay, then let's see. We had oil to use on us. You slick down your hair with a little of the oil. Um, let's see. What else was it? Um, the pan, the broom. It looks tempting, but you really don't want to eat it. You're really more partial to pumpkin pie. <laughs> uh, let's see. The broom and then the bag. You dust yourself off with the broom. Yeah. Nothing too good with The these, bag makes you look a bit like the rumor guy. Better stick to adventuring. It pays better. <laughs> okay. There's that. Um, that's just the, the bed is adequate, but nothing to take home with you. Oh, oh. After you leave, they'll probably put a plaque on it reading <laughs> something like, Hero slept here. Probably. Assuming, that is, that you leave in one piece and with your throat intact. Not necessarily a good <laughs> assumption. Yes, you should never assume. You know what they say the about The furnishings assuming. are sparse, but the bed isn't bad and the room seems pretty clean. Yeah. The furnishings are sparse, but... Oh, okay. Okay, so now let's leave the inn and they're gone. Um, let's leave and now finally leave this part of the town. Let's head over here. As you enter the northern part of the town, you hear the sound of a chisel chipping away at a stone block. A man is carving gravestones at one end of the street. Your attention quickly moves from the stone carver to the ominous gothic building in the center of the street. There is definitely something not right about this structure. What's not right about it? A sense of great danger and hunger comes from near the door of the massive stone building. Really? It looks fine. Nothing odd about it at all. You don't notice it. Oh. It is a thoroughly uninteresting wall. Sort of a wallflower. Oh. No. It is a... No. Let's, let's look at this. This is a bas relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. You have a creepy feeling as if it is looking right back at you. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. It's probably nothing. There is an indentation near the middle of the shadowed door. It looks like a set of six curved spokes radiating out from a central point. Hmm. That sounds familiar. It's an advertisement for Igor's headstone business. Can we take one? It's way too heavy to move. Aww. Let's look at this fellow. From the hump on his back to his twisted body, this is either the Hunchback of Notre Dame a mad scientist lab assistant, a grave digger, or an Elvis impersonator? Definitely an Elvis impersonator. Definitely. Well, let's say hello. The headstone carver stares at you and then goes back to work. Oh, not even gonna... Well, let's introduce You yourself. introduce yourself to the grave digger. Me, Igor! Hello, Igor. <laughs> Um, let's talk to Igor. Building was Adventurer's Guild. Uh, no adventurers, no guild. No. Well, we're an adventurer, so we'll, we'll get that guild running back up. Talmor Davia, this north part of town. You're just full of information. Thanks. Tell us about your work. Oh, this day job. Also work graveyard shift. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Hilarious. Hilarious. Igor dig graves in cemetery. Igor put dead person in grave. Igor cover dead person with dirt. Igor put headstone on grave. Very nice. Oh, plenty job security around here. Business is piling up. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Again. Uh, yes, again. Thank you. What about rumors? Oh, Igor not hear rumors. No. Igor not no stranger in town. Igor oh. not no doctor make strange things in lab. Um. Igor not no funny man in inn not funny. Who? Igor not know many things. What? Igor not hear many things. Um, for not hearing much, you sure hear a lot. 
Um, tell us about this monastery. <gasps> bad building. No, go there. Bad, bad, bad. Um, okay. It's bad. Um, okay. Well, let's say goodbye. He looks at you and then goes back to work. Okay. Um, let's see. Do I want to do this now or... Mm, yeah, let's die. <laughs> um... Monastery. Let's save. Let's let's enter the monastery. Bad place. <laughs> very bad place. Go away. You'll be very sorry. Uh, everyone's so concerned about this. I'm sure it's just fine. Ah, uh, let, let's just let's just open it. Um. What? Well, oh. <sighs> uh, Nobody ever listened to Igor. Um. Seafood snack that octopus's had the munchies ever since it got stoned. Fortunately for it, but not for you, it occasionally gets its meals delivered right to the door. Lovely. Um. So yeah, I just wanted to show that. We'll we'll actually go in there in a minute. First, because we actually have the keys to here, let's lock the door. Using the key the Burgermeister gave you. Okay, let's enter the Adventures Guild. Ah, you know, this is a quite a lovely place. And what is that that I see? It's a rare example of the deadly Mordavian moose, distinguishable by its long, fang-like canines. Someone has strung garlic around its neck, probably in hopes that it will stay on the wall. Yes, we would not want that to come after us. Let's touch it. Are you kidding? It would probably bite your fingers off, then suck the blood out of them. <laughs> You'd better moose out of this one. Oh, uh, gotta love the moose. Um, but this is a lovely place. Granted that it's sort of fallen apart, but... This place appears to have been an adventurer's guild hall at one time. Evidently, there are no more adventurers left in Mordavia. The hall is badly in need of maintenance. Ah, uh, let's look at these pictures. There is an empty picture frame above the bookshelf. Either somebody thought the wall itself was a piece of art, or a thief has been at work here. <laughs> there are a number of books on the shelf, including Hero Magazine's Golden Guild Guide to Mordavia, Flora, Fauna, and Folklore. Huh. We'll definitely have to read some of those. Um, let's... A large ring is securely attached to the ceiling. A portrait of an adventurer long gone hangs on the wall here. A small plaque at the base reads, Fjortor, Paladin. Ah, oh, Paladin! The painting shows a proud-looking adventurer standing on an obviously defeated dragon. It might have had more impact if the dragon wasn't just as obviously winking. <laughs> the plaque says, Wish you were here in Silmeria, Dunstan. <laughs> That's great. A finely crafted sword rests within this case, but there doesn't seem to be a door or any way to open the case. No? A plaque reads, Break glass in emergency. Um, I would constitute that us having only this rusty sword is very much so in an emergency. Um, well, let's... Can we force it? Are you it? kidding? You have trouble forcing a mayonnaise jar open, let alone a heavy case. You'll need to build up your strength before you can get through this one. <laughs> uh, let's examine it. The case looks totally solid, as if it was constructed around the sword. A plaque reads, Break glass in emergency only. Let's open it. The case is totally sealed. You can't find any way to open it. Okay, let's break it. You break open the front of the case. Avoiding the broken glass, you pull out the sword. It looks like a fine quality weapon. All right. Look at that. Now that is a sword. It's a fine sword. You have a high quality, well-balanced sword from the urgent care section of the adventures killed very nice um that's you've always heard that adventurers guild members are the pillars of society 
Well, this is one of the pillars of the Adventurer's Guild. Can we take this one? Trying to be a social climber? Absolutely. What's this on the floor? This is a long, sturdy-looking rope with a grapnel hook attached to one end. Well, let's take it. You pick up the rope and grapnel set and tie it onto your pack. Very good. Um, let's see, what, what do we have here? Some round metal weights lie neatly stacked on the floor. I better hope Dr. Cranium doesn't see them. He'd probably invent the cannon and upset the balance of power. <laughs> and then, what's this over this here? This is either some sort of diabolical device, or an exercise machine. Come to think of it, exercise machines are diabolical devices. That they are. They are awful. A large ewer, or maybe it's Mia, lies on the table. It was probably used to splash water on overheated athletes. It has a crack in the bottom and isn't useful for much of anything anymore. Ah. It's a large, rough-hewn table. Maybe those ewers belonged to the hewers. Maybe. Um, let's there is a large crack in the ceiling. The upstairs neighbors must have had a pretty wild party. <laughs> Just then you remember that you are upstairs. Must have been someone out for a moonlight stroll on the roof then. <laughs> um, well, let's look at this This now. desk holds the adventurer's logbook, a quill pen, and an inkwell. Oh boy, a logbook. There's finally another logbook for us. Let's, let's open the desk drawer. That would be a lot easier if the desk had a drawer. Oh, um, let's read the logbook. You read in the adventurer's log about some of the exploits of past adventurers in Mordavia. Prominent among them is the story of Piotr and the Dark One's cult. Very important. Near the end of the book, Piotr tells how he led the armies against the Chernovi cult outside the Dark One's cave. The fighters were trained soldiers, but the cult members fought like madmen. Suddenly the cult members changed their forms and became grotesque monsters. Many of the soldiers panicked and ran. The battle was nearly lost. Then Piotr heard the voice of Irana. By all my will, I banish you too. The voice was cut off. The cult members screamed and ran. Piotr entered the cave and searched for some sign of life. All he could find were the grotesque remains of cult members. The only sign of Irana was her magical staff lying on the ground. Piotr picked it up and left the cave, knowing that Irana was beyond his help. Piotr then tells how he brought the staff back to town and placed it in the town square. A garden of flowers instantly sprang up around it. Near the end of the book, Piotr tells that he was going to seek out the rituals of the Dark One and destroy them. There are no later entries. So yes, that is a very, that's very important. Everything that was just said, which is part of why I was keeping quiet. Um, so that explains why the staff is there in town, all the flowers that are around it. Um, hear a little bit about Piotr and these, the dark one, the cult and different rituals. Very, very important. So now that we've read that, let's sign the logbook. You sign your name into the adventurer's logbook with a flourish. It's almost become a habit by now. Ah, now let's just... You read in the adventurer's okay. log near the... Okay, it's all just the same thing. I thought it would have said something about... This desk hold... No. Okay, nothing different. Let's, um... Any more weight might strain your muscles. Try working with the weights you already have in the baskets. Okay, okay, I didn't realize there was already weights in the basket. So, let's use the stair-stepper thing. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. Okay. Now, we could rest and use this up just a little bit more, but we'll, we'll be coming here every single day, so we'll have plenty of time to do this. Um, let's look at these books. Let's read a Which book. book do you want to read? Which books are there? Oh, wow, look at all those books. Um, let's read about climbing. 
you read the book entitled Climbing Skills for Upwardly Mobile Adventurers. It's written entirely in one-syllable words, obviously intended for fighters. It's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> this that book teaches you that climbing sheer walls is best left for specialists, but that anyone with reasonable strength can climb using a rope and grapnel. You're pretty sure you know what to do now. All right. We can now climb. I, lo I love that book. Let's read Hero magazine. As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting, you find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. There are a series of articles about the land of Mordavia. The town originally grew up around Castle Borgov. The Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. The chapter on fauna describes a number of interesting creatures. The Necrotor is a vicious carnivore with big, sharp teeth. Some of the other monsters sound even more horrific. I do not want to meet them. In the forest lives the Lishi. A creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. You learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered unmarried woman. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They try to avenge themselves by drowning any man foolish enough to approach them. You could really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? Smiley face. Absolutely. That, that is very nice of you. And actually, you do have to read this. Like, you do have to actually read this here. Even if you know all that stuff, um, certain things won't happen if you don't do that. So make sure to do that. Um, let's read this brochure. The book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium, predict that someday one of my descendants will become the subject of a major computer game. The Castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, how cheesy can you get? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Lovely. <laughs> um... What is this creative casting? The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways, such as calming a fire, using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break, and so on. You pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell casting. Which we shouldn't even have. <laughs> um, oh well. What is this talk foo? This book teaches the ancient oriental art of Talk fool. How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. You get lost somewhere between karate and kuksul. <laughs> I love that. That that is that is great. Okay, one more thing to read. This book teaches you how to use the stair stepper to build strong leg muscles and talks about the importance of whole body development. It says to build up your strength gradually by adding weights to the baskets. Okay, so that's everything. Can we take a book? Hey, this isn't a lending library. Uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't think anyone else was using it. Nice try. But the bookshelf won't budge. If there's a secret passage around here, it's hidden a different way. Okay. We... The frame is concealing a secret passage, but you can't see any way to open it from here. Yeah, and we can't. Um, as far as I can recall, only thieves can actually open that up. Okay. The painting doesn't look particularly valuable, and there's nothing behind it. Okay, does this one say anything the different? painting does nope. Um, well, there's one more thing that we can do. Let's toss that up there. Now let's take a look the at it. The is caught in the big ring with the rope dangling down from it. Okay, let's... Climb rope. Rah! That was good climbing practice, but you haven't quite got it yet. Keep trying. Okay, we will. Um, we'll do that later. Let's take it for now. Um... 
So I am going to call that for this episode. Um, next video, probably the next two videos, we will be finishing up everything in town. And then we will finally be starting stuff. Um, important adventuring things so but for the next video probably the next two videos we will still just be talking however I will say the next video we will actually go into the monastery so there's that to look forward to um, so yes I will see you all next time <laughs>